Zadra at Energylandia, Ride to Happiness at Plopsa Landapan, Expedition G-Force at Holiday Park. These are just a few of the roller coasters in Europe that have built up legendary reputations. Every coaster enthusiast knows these rides are great and it's for good reason. But there's also several roller coasters I rode in Europe this past summer that don't get the recognition they deserve. None of these rides are as good as Zadra, Ride to Happiness, or Expedition G-Force. However, I still believe there are rides out there that get more attention than these that frankly shouldn't be. The following 15 roller coasters are attractions I want to get more buzz, since that's what they deserve. Hopefully I'll inspire some of you to go out and ride some of these, or at least put them higher up on your bucket list. Alright, let's dive in. Starting off this list at number 15 is Mammut at Tripsdrill in Germany. By no means did I get off this coaster thinking it was a great ride, but I do think it gets far too much criticism in the European coaster community. Oftentimes, Mammut is said to be forceless, and that it does nothing, and that there's no redeeming qualities, but I can certainly name a few redeeming qualities of this ride. First of all, Mammut is very smooth, and I always appreciate a smooth wooden roller coaster. The theming is fantastic, I love the little pre-show scene right before the lift hill. The drop in the back row gives excellent airtime and lateral simultaneously. And lastly, while people are right about the forces, I do still find the layout somewhat engaging between the various tunnel sections, and some of these fun zigzaggy track bits. It's nowhere near a perfect wooden coaster and it doesn't stand out to me, but I don't think it's a bad ride by any stretch of the imagination. Number 14 is Viedsvina at Bon Bon Land in Denmark. Similar to Mammut, there is no question that this ride is far from perfect. It simply has a disadvantage that the other Gerstler Eurofighters don't, and that's that it was the original. Therefore, the layout could only be so daring, and with that in mind, I really like what this ride packs in. The initial beyond vertical drop is just as good as all the others I've ridden, the swooping turn to the right is fairly unconventional, and the vertical loop is good fun as well. It does fizzle out in the second half, which prevents it from going any higher, but Vidsvina was definitely one of the reasons I'm glad to have visited Bon Bon Land. Number 13, Flucht von Novgorod at Hansa Park in Germany. I decided to give this one a lower spot since Flucht von Novgorod does have quite the fan base. However, in a park with De Schwartes Ganon, arguably one of the best coasters in Europe, Flucht von Novgorod can sometimes be overshadowed. But it shouldn't be, as the two attractions share a lot in common, and in some respects, Flucht von Novgorod has some elements on De Schwartes Ganon. For instance, that launch at the beginning is absolute madness, straight into a crazy airtime moment that I think is better than any singular airtime moment on De Schwartes Ganon. I also love the theming on this ride and the indoor bit at the end that really completes the layout and overall experience. This is truly one of the greatest launch coasters in the world, yet it doesn't seem to have that reputation, which I certainly wish were different. Number 12, Skywheel at Skyline Park in Germany. Over the years, I had a feeling these Mauer Skyloop clones were underrated, and I was right. I got to ride my first one in August, and it was a blast. The super unconventional layout mixes in some sweet hang time, crushing positive g-forces, and some odd sensations on the lift hill. And something I especially liked about Skywheel was the fact that it sent you through the course two times. Most of the Skyloops, once you've completed the layout, will catch you on the lift and slowly take you back into the station, but this one will bring you back up to the top so you can repeat all of the elements once again. Two times the fun on an already overlooked ride model sounds underrated to me. Number 11, Draukong at Jura Summerland in Denmark. Of the three Intamin coasters at Jura Summerland, Draukong often gets left behind. Many say it's rough and uncomfortable, which for its age is somewhat true. It is a little surprising to me that despite this ride having opened in 2017, it does shuffle quite a lot. But it's the fact that people can't overlook this in favor of all the other things the ride offers. In my opinion, had this ride been smoother, it would have been one of the best family coasters in the world. The layout is so wonky for an invert, with a launch at the beginning and no inversions. Instead, Draukong focuses on swooping turns with heavy positive g-forces, as well as some fun near-miss elements and fluid transitions. Not to mention you get to experience all of this with just a lap bar which mitigates the shakiness, and that's why I don't really mind it so much. Number 10, Wakala at Bellewarde in Belgium. My favorite ride at this family park in Belgium was easily Wakala. This Gerslauer family coaster is super unique and has an incredibly fun layout. I had never really heard anyone talk about this coaster opening recently in 2020, so I came off very impressed. I rode this with a local enthusiast named Jonas, and he too enjoyed it quite a lot as he rode it for the first time, and so did my brother Sean. Easily the coaster's defining feature is the spike that takes place over the water, making this a rare family shuttle coaster. However, that's not even the highlight of the ride for me. Matter of fact, I'm not sure there is a highlight moment on Wakala, the whole thing is just solid. We were debating leaving Bellawarde out of the trip due to time constraints, but I'm so glad we went for Wakala alone. Number 9, Van Helsing's Factory at Movie Park, Germany. Speaking of great family coasters, here's another one, located entirely indoors. I'm sure many of you have heard fantastic things about Movie Park's brand new studio-themed coaster, and it is well-deserved. That too probably could have been on this list just because I enjoyed it so much. But since it is the big new addition at the park, it seems to be dramatically overshadowing the other indoor coaster here named Van Helsing's Factory. This one blends theming and layout pretty evenly, and that's a good thing, since either on their own would have made the coaster worth a ride. It's a deceptively wild experience, since you can't see anything coming, but it's also not too much to where I think the whole family wouldn't be able to enjoy it. I was really impressed by both of the signature family coasters at this park. 
Number 8, Bruschevenen at Bakken in Denmark. There's two big reasons this one gets a lot of criticism, and I'm glad I can at least acknowledge and see the reasons why. Number 1, the ride removed its Brakeman feature a few years back, which made the experience much more engaging. Two, there's another coaster called Ruschebanen right nearby at Tivoli Gardens, and that one is admittedly better. It still features the Brakeman, and all of the airtime moments are more pronounced. That said, if you forget the comparisons and look past the fact that the Brakeman was removed, there's still many great things about this coaster. Ruschebanen opened in 1932, so it's a super historic attraction that has this terrific classic feel. Despite its age, I still found it to run quite smooth, and it has two exceptional double downs that give great airtime in the back row. This one made the list for similar reasons as Mammut at Tripstrill and Vidsvina at Bonbonland. I know what could have been done to improve the experience, and it is a shame it's not a standout coaster, but still, I had a lot of fun on it, and I don't think it deserves to be knocked on too hard. Remaining in the same park, number 7 is Mine Train Olven at Bakken. Yet another reason I really enjoyed this park, Mine Train Olven feels like a bat out of hell. You would never suspect anything from off-ride, partially because most of it is covered by trees. But from the few sections that are visible, it looks like nothing more than a basic family coaster. I went in with these expectations and came off mind blown. This single-handedly became one of the most surprising family coasters I've ever been on. The ride is stupidly zippy, has lots of abrupt ejector airtime, and some wild laterals too. It's a family coaster that combines so many excellent forces, and the layout is integrated beautifully into the landscape. Oftentimes, the trees act as near misses as well, which rounds out a terrific ride that should really get talked about far more often. Number 6, Blue Fire Mega Coaster at Europa Park in Germany. I can already see the comments, Blue Fire's launch feels like a kiddie coaster, Blue Fire is forceless, Blue Fire is the worst mock multi-launch. But frankly, I didn't find any of these things to be true. Not that the launch was great, and not that this was one of the better mock coasters, however, there is so much going for this thing. While none of the forces stand out, there is a very healthy balance of positive forces, negative forces, and lateral forces. In that regard, it reminded me a lot of another mock coaster I rode in Germany, Star Trek Operation Enterprise at Movie Park, which I feel the exact same way about. The two rides just should have had stronger forces because the way they were distributed is perfect. Blue Fire also seems to get better as you progress, with my favorite part located right at the end of the layout, and that's the snappy Heartland roll reminiscent to the Mosasaurus roll on Velocicoaster. So not only was the layout solid, but I can really appreciate Blue Fire since we wouldn't have a lot of these newer mock launch coasters without it. Number 5, Heisefart at Wild und Freizeitpark Klotten. Debatedly the greatest wild mouse ever built, Heisefart is at a park with just one traditional roller coaster. But even so, it's not really that traditional at all. While it does feature a few classic hairpin turns like other wild mice, Heisefart mostly focuses on zippy transitions and surprising airtime. The ride's standout moment and most photographed moment is a series of four consecutive bunny hills all providing ejector airtime, which is almost unheard of for a wild mouse. And while that is the best part of the ride, the whole thing is loads of fun and is located in a magnificent setting. At number 4 is Juvelin at Jura Summerland in Denmark. The second coaster from this park on this list, Juvelin is one that I loved so much. It's one of those rides that shouldn't be as good as it is, yet somehow it's better than lots of coasters three times its size. This is an intimate family multi-launch coaster, which if you kept up with the channel, you'll know that this model is one of my guilty pleasure ride experiences. Juvelin is the best example of one of these attractions, so it's no wonder it ranks so high on this list. I mean, talk about one hell of a top three. Two of the three made this underrated list, and the other is one of my top coasters in Europe. Way to go, Jur Summerland. Heading up the country of Denmark brings us to Lena at Fair Up Summerland. I think you could make a case for this being in the top two and maybe even number one on this list, but I think more and more people have caught on to the fact that this is an underrated ride. A lot of that can be credited with the fact that Fair Up Summerland has gotten a lot more notoriety this season with the addition of Phoenix. And while that ride did live up to the hype, there's another coaster in the park that remains pretty overlooked. Lena is a Gerslauer launch coaster with one of the most forceful launches I've experienced and lots of airtime moments that feel like they're being taken with way too much speed. If there are some drawbacks to this coaster, it does fizzle out a little towards the end, and I'm also not a fan of the bulky over-the-shoulder restraints. But layout-wise, this is easily one of the most underrated coasters I've ever been on. Number 2, Mystic at Wallaby Rhone Alps in France. Although Mystic was the only major thrill coaster I rode in France, it was a dang good one. This Gerslauer Infinity coaster gets overlooked in favor of all the other great ones in Europe, plus it gets few enthusiast visitors due to its remote location. You factor both of these things together, and it's no wonder why this is an incredibly underrated ride. I enjoyed Mystic better than most Gerslauer coasters I've ever ridden, which is saying something considering that the ride only stands 100 feet tall and only features 1,800 feet of length. But it doesn't even feel like a short ride due to its shuttle coaster dynamic, which in itself deserves a shout out. That incline spike is seriously one of the coolest hang time moments I've experienced. Mystic is also a glass smooth ride, which is great since a lot of the other Gerslauers can be hit or miss in that department. It's hard to imagine they could have executed the ride any better, which is why it had to be at the top of this list. But there is one ride I placed higher, and that's number one, Abysses, at Energylandia in Poland. 
In a park with Zadra and Hyperion, two of the best roller coasters in the world, it makes sense that Abyssus would get overlooked. But it's the fact that the ride gets an awful lot of criticism too. Here's the thing, too many people get on Abyssus expecting it to rip your face off like nearby Let Coaster at Legendia. Both are similarly sized new generation Vacomas, but Abyssus simply wasn't intended to be that crazy. I do think they could have eliminated the trim brake on the drop, as that's the only hiccup of the ride in my opinion, however the rest is fantastic. Abyssus offers a glossy smooth ride experience with a pretty balanced series of forces. You've got a number of excellent airtime moments and loads of positive Gs. Abyssus impressed me in many ways, but by far the thing that caught me most off guard was the fact that I grayed out multiple times every ride. It's not intense in a relentless kind of way, but it is intense in the sense that the elements are quite compact and pull substantial forces on riders. I can't wait to see Vekoma introduce more coasters like Abyssus as soon, and hopefully we can even start to see a few of those in America. With that being said, I'm now going to wrap up my top 15 most underrated roller coasters in Europe. Let me know if there were any others that maybe should have made the list, and feel free to counteract my list in the comments. And in the meantime, leave a like and subscribe to Coaster Dash, as it really helps me out. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye guys.